Yes. Uh, good morning to all the participants. You know, this is the thirteenth uh, class uh, we are ending the subject with strength of materials. Now, in the last of three, four, three classes, we have discussed uh, uh, the third unit that is bending moment and shear force. Bending moment and shear force diagrams. Now, I will continue that. Now, uh, uh, and further, I will I will just recall the things whatever we have discussed in the previous class. In the previous previous class, uh, the introduction part, and then I will continue the solving few problems in bending moment and shear force diagram. Bending moment and shear force. How to prepare the how to draw the bending moment and shear force diagrams. Now, therefore, already we have discussed. Again, I will come back and I will discuss about those things issues. Now, we know that uh, in the bending moment and shear force diagram uh, chapter, we need to understand the types of beams. Types of beams. That is one. The can that is one cantilever beam. One fixed end. The other one is free end. Fixed end. And two. This is a simply supported beam. It is simply supported when simple support. Simple support and the beam span length span length this is not and you know this is this type of beams are fixed beams you now both the things both are fixed for example these are the fixed beam fixed lens you now these are fixed rigidly fixed this is rigid more focus and you know this is one proper cantilever it is called proper cantilever beam this is a proper cantilever beam and similarly this is one overhanging beam that is simple support, support, and this is the overhanging portion. This is the L1 span length of the beam. So this is the overhanging. And similarly, it is the right side overhanging. The simple support, support, and this is the overhanging portion. And sometimes we will come across with such this kind of beams also. No support, support, and overhanging to the left and overhanging to the right. And this kind of beams are continuous beams. And this is another type of beam. It is the fixed support, and the other one. This is the hinge. Now here, some deflection is allowed in, in this support, and this is called roller support. And types of loads. Now, uh, in regular in practice, we will come across with the different types of loads and the structures that is beams or columns. So this is one point load or concentrated load. We can be says concentrated load or point load. And this is uniformly distributed load. The uniformly distributed load, the load is distributed over the entire span of the beam. Sometimes it may be half, sometimes it may be quarter, sometimes sometimes it may be at the center. Now depending upon the type of the structure we will come across. And this is the uniformly varying load. This type of this type of loading is uniformly varying load. And this is the moving loads, like you know, the buses, vehicles which are traveling on the bridge, you know, the moving loads. And you know, the one thing we should understand here in the uniformly distributed load. So this is the uniformly distributed load, W kilonewton per meter. Now that is. The load intensity of the load acting on the beam is W kilonewton per meter. In one meter distance, there is W kilonewton load is acting. So here the span is length. Span length of the beam is L meters. But therefore the total load, the total load is acting on the beam is W L kilonewton. W L kilonewton. Now this U D L can be converted into point load. That is, this for the purpose of calculation, we need to understand. You now this is the the load acting on the beam. You now we are converting this uniformly distributed load into point load. This is I have in this diagram. It is only one point load is considered, isn't it? We have converted. It is in the for calculation purpose the uniformly distributed load. We are we are converting that. Completely clear, Ila. Huh? Madam, PPT
Ms. Pranam? Okay. Much closer. Yes, madam. Ah, okay, fine, sir. On sure light again, there. Fine. Then you know. <laughs> no, you. A during in in the process of calculating the bending moment of shear force diagram. Or any computer for computation purpose. For all computation purpose, now we are converting this uniformly distributed load into point load. That is W L kilonewton. Total load acting on the beam is W is the intensity and length. Therefore, total load acting on the beam is W L kilonewton. W multiplied by L. For example, two kilonewton per meter is acting and two meter span. Two into two multiplied by two. Is the four kilonewton load is acting on the beam? It is. We have converted this as a point load, and it is assumed that the entire UDL uniformly distributed load is acting at the center of the span. It is assumed that it is acting at the center of the span. Now here, now in the uni uniformly distributed load, the the load is acting at all the points at every point. No, we cannot. We are not able to compute for a every point. Therefore, what we will do? We are converting this uniformly distributed load into point load. Now, similarly, now this is now I have converted the entire beam load into one point load. Now, if you consider this beam, this beam, this diagram, in this diagram, I have done it two part. That is, total load acting on the beam is total load acting on the beam is W L kilonewton total load. W kilonewton means the then intensity of the load acting on the beam for the for the span, and I have converted you now this into point load. Two point loads I have done it. Total load is W L. Therefore, what I did in this case, you now this is I have made the half of the beam that is half portion, and it is assumed that half portion of the beam load is acting at the center. Now I have converted this entire load into two parts. That is W L by two half. That is W L, and this is the half. Now it is assumed that it is acting at the center of the span. Now this is the half of the span. It is assumed that it is acting at the center of this half span. And similarly, the other side. Now here I have converted this U D L into one point load. Here I have converted this U D L into two point loads. Now similarly, now this is in this diagram. Now it is converted. We, I have converted this UDL W kilonewton UDL is converted into four point loads. When I divide this WL into four parts, now it becomes WL by four kilonewton. WL by four kilonewton, like you know, there are four parts. Now it is assumed. Now divide this figure, that beam, into four parts, and it is assumed that it is acting at the center, acting at the Center of the span. Now, this is one important issue our polytechnic, our students should follow and understand clearly. Now, otherwise, we will come across with many mistakes and that leads to wrong results. Now, therefore, let us be very careful while dividing, while converting this uniformly distributed load into point load. Now, it is assumed that the entire load is acting at the center. If I am converting this entire load into one point load, Now similarly here I have done it two point load two point loads now it I have now here two point load total is W L therefore it is assumed that half of the span now this span so this is W L by W L by two similarly it is W L by two it is assumed that it is acting at the center of the half of the span therefore it is at a distance L by four it is assumed it is assumed that that is uniformly distributed load. We have converted into two point loads, and it assumes half of the point, half of the span of the load, isn't it? And similarly, now here in this diagram, the same load and is converted into four parts, isn't it? Now therefore, it is assumed that it is L by four, L by four, L by four, four parts, 
and it is assumed it is acting at the center of this L by 4. Therefore, it is at a distance L by 8 from the support. Is it not? Now, I have converted this into four point loads. Now, most important thing, one should remember this. Is it not? Now, while cal or during the time of, at the time of calculation, we should understand, we should know exactly how the load, uniformly distributed load is converted into point loads. Now, similarly, now this is, we know that the conditions of equilibrium, already we have discussed about this in the two classes, previous two classes. Now, again, I will recall it, there are three conditions of equilibrium, equilibrium condition always, that is vertical, vertical force, sigma v, all the forces which are acting in a structure, that is, in all the, sum of the vertical forces must be equal to zero, then no movement in the vertical direction. Now, similarly, sigma h, all the horizontal forces, horizontal force, horizontal force, horizontal force, horizontal force, all these horizontal forces must be is equal to zero. And also, when the when the beam is loaded, it is possible the beam may rotate in this direction. Beam may rotate, now this is called moment. Moment is rotation. Now, therefore, some of the moments of all these, that is, forces on a loaded beam, is equal to zero. Some of the moments. Now, this under this condition, the we call the structure is in equilibrium condition. Now, whenever we say the structure is in equilibrium condition, it is assumed, it is understood that all the forces, the vertical forces, some algebraic sum of all the vertical forces must be equal to zero. All the algebraic sum of all the horizontal forces must be equal to zero. Algebraic sum of all the moments in the beam is equal to in the in the system is equal to zero. Is it not? There is no movement by the no horizontal movement, no vertical movement, or no rotation. Now, under this circumstances, we will call this as the, the body is in stable condition. No movement is found. Is it not? Now, our, our, our design must be to satisfy our design or the, our structure must satisfy these conditions. Then our building will be stable. Our bridge will be stable. Our dam will be stable. Is it not? Now, the reaction, the calculation of reactions. That is reaction, support reaction. We are calling this as support reaction. Now let us consider, let us take, see a, a cantilever beam, and this cantilever beam consisting of three point loads: 10 kilonewton, 20 kilonewton, and 30 kilonewton. Now here in the cantilever beam, it is a free end, and this is the fixed end. This is not. Therefore, the entire load is resisted by this support. Now, therefore, all these forces are acting downward. Therefore, this reaction must be in the upward, up, upward direction because we have to maintain the equilibrium condition. To maintain the equilibrium condition, now therefore, we need to support, we need to design the structure for a 60 kilonewton load to resist this 60 kilonewton load. Now, therefore, reaction. We have only one support here. There is no issue with this, and we have only one. All the vertical forces are acting downward, and there will be a reaction in the upward direction. Therefore, some of the downward forces must be equal to some of the upward forces. Therefore, reaction RA at A, reaction A is equal to 60 kilonewton. Some of these three vertical downward forces. Is it not? Now, they're similar. now they're, that is how we get the reaction RA. And likewise, now there is another, there is there is another problem that is a simply supported beam. This simply supported, this simply supported beam is loaded with 40 kilonewton and 40 kilonewton. Is it not 40 kilonewton? In simply supported beam, there are two reactions. There are two support reactions. We have these two support. One is at A, the other one is at D. This reaction it is acting upward. This reaction is also acting upward. There are two point loads acting downward. 40 kilonewton. 40 kilonewton. Now, therefore, this for particularly for this beam, for this beam, this system, this beams and supports columns. Now, this is symmetrically loaded. Now, because now it is one meter from the right hand support and one meter from the left hand support, it is symmetrically loaded. Therefore, some of the some of the vertical load must be equal to some of some of, some of the downward forces must be equal to some of the upward loads, upward forces. Therefore. Now, after calculating sigma v and sigma applying this 
or three or two conditions, we can find out that is Re is equal to what, a support reaction at A is equal to 40 kN and support reaction at D is equal to 40 kN. So this can be calculated and we have discussed about all these things in the previous class, isn't it? And similarly, the another simply supported beam, how to calculate the reaction? A simple support, a simply supported beam. So this is only one downward force acting downward at the center of this beam, beam, at the center of the beam, and there are two support reactions. Now this is reaction A, RA, and reaction C, RC. Some of these two reactions, RA plus RC is equal to, that is, downward force that is what we have written here isn't it now to calculate that that is to calculate the reaction support reaction now you know of uh, ra and rb now let us call the second equation that is second condition of the equilibrium that is sigma h sigma h is equal to zero we have not taken that because there is no horizontal force that are acting on the structure so therefore see now let us call the third uh, condition of equilibrium that is sigma m e is equal to zero sigma m is equal to zero algebraic sum of all the moments in the beam system of the forces is equal to zero therefore sigma m a is equal to sigma m a is equal to let us take the moment about this point when you take the moment about this point that is force reaction rc and the distance force at the perpendicular distance is the moment. Now therefore, that is that is taking the moment about the A, that is force RC multiplied by 6 meter distance. Now this creates anti-clockwise moment, anti-clockwise moment and here this force with respect to this support point A, it creates the clockwise moment. Therefore, sum of the anti-clockwise moment is equal to sum of the clockwise moment. Now under those circumstances, that is, it is clockwise moment, it is anti-clockwise moment. Therefore, RC multiplied by 6 meter, RC multiplied by 6 meter is equal to 100 into 3 meter. Therefore, we will get 50 kN. That is how we can calculate the support reactions. You know, similarly, now this is beam, this beam is also symmetrically loaded. This beam is also a symmetrically loaded, so symmetrically loaded beam. Now it is not necessary to do all these exercises. Now, because the load is acting at the center, only one point load, therefore, half of this load is taken by, resisted by this support reaction, and half of the load is resisted by this support. Therefore, straight away we can write it down, no problem. After learning how to do this, uh, after making many exercises, you now straight away we can write down, we can understand, or we can write down, R A is equal to half of this, and R B. Only for this condition, for this condition, that depends upon the condition, half of. That depends on, because it is symmetrically loaded, the beam is symmetrical, because the load acting at the center, B, isn't it? Now, now the condition, uh, sorry, bending moment and shear force, shear force, that is algebraic sum of all the vertical forces in a loaded beam at any section is, at any section is either to the left side or to the right side. The definition of the shear force, shear force definition means, that is, the, at any section, any point, at any section, sum of the vertical forces, algebraic sum of the vertical forces, either to the left hand side or to the right hand side. Is it not? No, that is the sum, no, shear force. Shear force means some, no, here if you consider the right hand side of this section, W is acting downward and reaction is acting upward. The difference between these two is the shear force. Similarly, the other side, sum of the upward force, we have only upward force here, no downward force, therefore this is, the, this is the shear force, the value of this reaction is the shear force, isn't it? Then now we have we are adapt, we are adapted this uh, no, same convention, for everything we need to, we, need, we have to, order, we, we should consider some convention, some method, we have to follow some certain rules and regulations. So therefore, what we do normally, no, now, the same convention. Now, here, suppose considering this beam, this is the load where I, this is the section. Now, if you consider the left hand section, left hand side, now the result. Now, here in this case, there is the what 
shear force is is acting upward therefore from the section left upward from the section left upward is positive and vice versa when from this section if we calculate the left hand side the sum of the vertical forces result is upward now it is positive i have taken this as positive and the vice versa if i get the right side and down result the downward force now then i will consider this as positive and similarly now this is vice versa of this, of this is it not if, if i calculate the shear force from this section left hand side the sum of the algebraic sum of all the forces in the left hand side the result is downward and if you consider the right hand side if the result is upward then it is negative shear force i am calling it as negative shear force is it not and similarly the bending moment bending moment and, uh, and you know in this diagram in the uh, in the in this loaded beam the shear force is varying from one point to the other point depending upon the span and depending upon the load so therefore the variation of shear force from one end to the other end of the beam is bending moment diagram and from one end to the other from one end to the other end of the beam is bending moment diagram bending sorry shear force diagram and similarly for bending moment now this is the bending moment now algebraic sum of in any loaded beam in any loaded beam in a any section at any section calculating the algebraic sum of the moments of all the forces either to the left hand side or to the right hand side is bending moment is it not bending moment considering any section at any point let us solve few problems you will understand exactly how to do this now the definition is in any section consider the any section in any section algebraic sum of all the moments of the forces either to the left hand side or to the right right hand side is bending moment now here the bending moment from one depending upon the load and the span load acting on the beam and the span now now the bending moment is varying from one end to the other end now the plot of this variation of the bending moment diagram from one end to the other end is bending moment diagram is it not now here in the, the, again we need sometimes it is the deformation is downward bending this is in this direction sometimes maybe upward in the reverse direction it is possible is it not under those circumstances we need to follow certain principle discipline we have to follow some principle therefore sign convention so whenever the bending moment the due to the application of the load to apply load if the beam bends in this in this form bending in this form in this direction then it is called sagging bending moment the bending moment occurs in this diagram in this type of beam is sagging bending moment it is called positive bending moment and similarly now here now if we consider this this beam here the the bending will be in this direction it is sagging bending moment and this is in the opposite direction it is hugging bending moment now this i have taken the positive and this i have taken as negative in very rare case there are possibilities we may come across with this very rarely now now this is because of the load the depending upon the load is it not now depending upon the load now this type of bending is hugging bending moment therefore it is called hanging negative it is this i have taken the negative bending moment is it not again the bending moment bending moment at any section is the moment of all the forces in a loaded beam moment of all the forces either to the left of the section or to the right of section is the bending moment and you know this is another method another the, the, the shape of bending of the beam can be your beam so it is some people some in some textbook somebody will follow clockwise somebody will take anti clockwise now that depends upon whatever the whatever you have to follow some discipline and principles now you adapt your own method there is no issue not necessarily be you know now i have taken this as a positive some textbook uh, some people will consider this is negative and some people will consider this is positive so no problem no you have to adopt certain your own method and you can follow that 
same path, same whatever the things you have assumed. Now, in the last, in the previous class, we have discussed about this problem. You now, draw SMD and VMD for a cantilever of span L subjected to a point load W kilonewton at its free end. Now, this is the problem we have discussed. We have discussed about this. Now, therefore, see. Now, now this is the one problem given. Now, a cantilever beam subjected to a point load of W kilonewton. Subjected to a subjected to a point load of W kilonewton. The span length of the beam is it is L meter. Now, in this problem, now we have only one support. That is upward support reaction. Is it not R A? We have only one support. Reaction R A, and then you know one W load, only one load. Therefore, W sigma V is equal to zero. Is it not sigma V is equal to zero? Downward force must be equal to upward force. Is it not? Now therefore, upward force and downward force. Now this upward force and downward force must be equal to is it, it must be uh, sum of these two is equal to, uh, downward force must be equal to upward force. Therefore, the reaction reaction is equal to same amount. W kilonewton is downward, W kilonewton is upward. Now to plot the shear force diagram, there are three steps we have to follow here. The first step is one, number one, that is find out the reaction. Find the reaction. So finding after finding out the reaction, now that one job is done. The second job, now we have to calculate the shear force. Now the shear force, see, the according to the definition, shear force at any section x. At any distance x or any at any point. Now see, after calculating the reaction, now this is W kilonewton is the reaction acting upward and W kilonewton is acting downward. Now this is the, the this is the, uh, this is the diagram. This is how the rea the re reaction is calculated. This is the first step. First stage. Step one. And similarly, this is step. Two calculation of that is shear force, is it not? Calculation of shear force to calculate the shear force. How to calculate the shear force? Consider the section at any point, at any any point on the beam from from B to A or A to B. Any section. Now the definition says algebraic sum of all the vertical forces either to the right side or to the left side is shear force. Now therefore let us consider now the, at this section at this section let us consider the left hand side se section. If we consider the left hand section now it is W W kilonewton is acting upward. According to our sign convention the result W is acting upward therefore it is positive. Isn't it? Now if we consider the right hand section the sum of all the vertical forces in this B, in this part is equal to W kilonewton it is acting downward. At any section, at any point, at any point from here, if you consider, if you take the section at this point, if you consider the section at this point, again W kilonewton is acting downward right side. If if you consider the left hand side, W kilonewton is acting upward. So therefore, that is some the no at any point. No, let us plot now after calculating the shear force. At any point, we will get the W, 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 W kilonewton. If you reconcile the right hand side, W kilonewton is acting downward. If you consider the left hand side, W kilonewton is acting upward. Therefore, all along the beam, W kilonewton is acting or uh, shear force. Shear force all along the beam is W kilonewton. Therefore, now let us plot. Now take a reference. This is the reference 0. This is 0, 0 reference. Now from 0, the shear force which is acting upward, therefore let us go up. If we go, let us go outside, let, upward, well, let us go upward from here to here. It is W kilonewton up to W kilonewton is acting. And all along the beam, now W kilonewton is acting all along the beam, therefore take a straight line and at this point W kilonewton is acting downward. Therefore come down. Now this shows the variation of the bending moment. Sorry variation of the shear force, is not And similarly, now for calculating the bending moment, see, I'll, in, uh, in the previous class I told you that the bending moment at the free end and the simply supported end is zero always. Free end and 
bend free end and simply supported end, the bending moment will be zero. Therefore, see now at the free end, the bending moment is equal to zero. Now let us calculate the bending moment at this point. If you calculate the bending moment at this point in the B, now what is happening here? If you calculate the bending moment at this point, now it is W multiplied by X. W multiplied by X. This is what we have written here. W multiplied by X is the W multiplied by X is the W multiplied by X is the bending moment at this point. Isn't it? So similarly, if you consider here W multiplied by the distance is the bending moment. If you can this point zero, if you consider this distance, now the bending moment varying from that is varying from B to R A. Now the maximum bending moment occurs at this point. Is not the maximum bending moment because W into distance W L kilonewton meter. Is not W L kilonewton. W in the load and the distance perpendicular distance is the moment. Now at any point we can calculate. At this point it is zero. If you come to if you calculate the shear force bending moment at this point W into distance. Similarly W into distance. Similarly W into distance. Is not at any point we can calculate from here. Now the bending moment depends upon the load and the distance. Now therefore, if you come, if you, if you reach this point, the maximum bending moment occurs at this point, is not? Therefore, W kilonewton, W L kilonewton meter. Now after drawing, after cal after calculation, calculating, that is, you see, now when X is equal to zero, X is equal to zero, bending moment is equal to zero, and X is equal to L, the maximum bending moment, bending moment at A. It is equal to W L kilonewton meter. And already we have discussed now this is the bending will be in this form, in this shape. Now this is hugging bending moment, therefore it is negative. We are we are this is a negative bending moment. Therefore, take a reference, take a reference, zero, zero, and the negative bending moment that downwards. Now join this straight away. Now this will give you the shear force diagram. This is the shear force diagram. No, no. That is the shear force diagram. This is the shear force diagram. No, no. This. Now this is the shear force and bending moment diagram for the given beam and loading. Isn't it? Now let us discuss one more problem. Let us understand a little more. Now if you consider, now read the problem. A cantilever of span, cantilever, cantilever span, cantilever beam of span. 4 meter is subjected to a point load of 6 kN at its free end. Draw shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. Isn't it? Now, this is the problem given. The problem, this is the pro given problem. Now, draw the diagram that is beam diagram. Now, see, now here a cantilever, cantilever beam. It is a cantilever beam. It is 4 meter, 4 meter span. Cantilever beam, 4 meter span. Now, and load acting at the free end is 60 kN. For this beam, let us draw the bending shear force and bending moment diagram. Now, here, the step one, first let us find out the reaction. Now, for this beam, cantilever beam, the total load acting downward is equal to reaction upward. Therefore, total load is equal to, that is, straight away we can write down sigma V is equal to zero, and this is R A is equal to 60 kN. And now we will go to the step 2. Step 2, see the shear force. Let us calculate the shear force. Shear force at B. Now, if you consider the shear force at this point, 60 kN load is acting downward. 60 kN load is acting downward. If you consider the, if you come to this point, this section at this point, if you consider the right hand side, the shear force acting downward. Shear force acting downward from this section, at this section. And similarly, there is, if you consider the left hand side, a 60 kN force is acting upward, isn't it? If it, at any point from the, in the, on the beam, along the beam, all along the beam, at any point, let us calculate, see, if you calculate at this point, or calculating at this point, or calculating at this point, at any point, at any point, now the bending, the shear force is, remains same, because no forces are acting in between, we have only one load is acting. If you consider, now this is, if you consider, now this is the section, 
Okay, at this section, left hand side, sum of the algebraic sum of all the forces in the left hand side is only reaction if it is acting upward, the, it is 60 kN, therefore it is positive. So if you consider the right hand side of this section, now 60 kN only one force is acting downward, and this is the, the according to our same convention, left up shear is positive, it is left up. Left up shear is positive and right down is also positive at any section. This is not. Now therefore, now let us start this. Take a reference. Take a reference. Taking the reference. Now this 60 kilometer is acting upward. Let us go by 60 kilometer. And at all the points, if you calculate the shear force, at all the points we will get 60 kilometer. Therefore, it is constant from one end to the other end, no force in between. Then we have only one force is acting downward. Therefore, anywhere you calculate the shear force, that is right side 60 kilonewton downward, left side 60 kilonewton upward. Therefore, it is a positive shear force. Now, therefore, now here no constant, and here at this point 60 kilonewton is acting downward. This is not. Now this completes the shear force diagram. This is the shear force diagram. And similar, this is the second step. And the third step, now in the third step, now, now let us calculate the bending moment. Now already I told you that the free end, the bending moment at the free end is equal to zero. Bending moment at free end is equal to zero. And you know, if we calculate the bending moment at this point, if we calculate the bending moment at this section, now what is going to happen here? The 60 multiplied by distance, isn't it? Let us say at the center, at the center, 60 multiplied by 2, that is 120 kilo newton meter. 120. 60 at the center, 60 multiplied by 2, that is 120 kilo newton meter distance. This is, not, this, is the bending, this is the bending moment at the center. And similarly, if you calculate the bending moment at the end, now what is going to happen here? Now here, 60 kilo newton multiplied by distance. 60 kilo newton multiplied by distance. That is 60 multiplied by 40 kilonewton. Isn't it? 40 kilonewton. Now that is what we have written here. 60 multiplied by 4. Isn't it? Therefore, it is 240 kilonewton. There is the bending, bending, bending moment across the all along the beam. Now, depending upon the the load is constant here at this point, the load remains same. Now, distance changes depending upon the distance. Now, the bending moment at 1 meter it is 60 kilonewton. Bending moment at 2 2 meter, it is 120 kilonewton. Bending moment at 3 meter, it is 180 kilonewton. Bending moment at 4, force into perpendicular distance. That is what we are written here. We are calculating the bending moment. Bending moment at A, at bending moment at A, is bending moment at A is equal to, that is 60 multiplied by distance. This is not 60 into distance. This is not therefore moment at A, bending moment at A, is equal to 60 multiplied by 4 is equal to 240. Now already I told you that now this now this B now there is a bending downward. It is when it bends downward. Now this we have taken as the hugging bending moment. This hugging bending moment is negative. Hugging bending moment is neg negative. Now therefore let us take a reference from this zero and negative bending moment. Let us plot this below the reference because negative bending moment and you know no from this is zero and this is the maximum it is 240 kilonewton meter this is the bending moment. this is how the we can plot the bending moment diagram for the given v bending moment diagram for the given v now it means bending moment at this point is zero bending moment at the center we can measure this bending moment to be at the quarter distance we can measure this Bending moment at any distance, at any point, we can measure this. Now, this is the variation of the bending moment. Zero bending moment, 240 kilonewton meter bending moment. We can measure the bending moment at any point. Isn't that? Now, this is the advantage. Sometimes, you know, we are not able to calculate the bending moment at every point. Now, we, we need to calculate the bending moment at critical points. Then we will plot it. Now, according to design, we can change. Uh, we can select the, we can take the data from the diagram. That is the advantage of this bending moment and the shear for diagram. Isn't it? Now here it is a simple problem. Now we can understand. Now in the 
for in coming in the next problem let us see how it has to be now let us consider the another b a cantilever of span cantilever of span cantilever b of span 6 meter is subjected to three point loads of 2 kN each at a distance of 2 meter 4 meter and 6 meter from the fixed axis draw shear force diagonal by bending moment diagonal this is not now our students i am advising our students to go through the problem carefully and read this first understand this problem this is not you must read two three times then understand then write the diagram this diagram this is not left hand side right hand side fixed end simply supported end then three end now let us understand how the student should understand all these things carefully the cantilever of span 6 meter 6 meter span is subjected to three point loads of 2 kN each that is 2 meter from the fixed end 2 kN 4 meter from the fixed end 4 2 kN and 6 2 kN at a distance 6 meter from the fixed end so this is what the problem is given now let us solve the problem and let us prepare the bending moment and shear force diagram this is not to prepare the bending moment shear bending moment shear force and bending moment diagram there are three steps we should follow don't mix all these three steps they are all they are independent that no there is no mixing this is not there are all, all the three steps are separate the first one is step 1 let us the first step is always to calculate the reaction what is the reaction this is not to calculate the reaction now we know that sigma v is equal to 0 Sigma v is equal to zero. When sigma v is equal to zero, sum of the upward forces, upward forces, must be equal to sum of the downward forces. Isn't it? For this condition, this must satisfy. Therefore, sum of the upward force that is R A and this is the downward three downward forces are acting. Therefore, sum of the downward force is equal to six kilonewton. That must be that is equal to reaction R A. Because we have only one support here, therefore entire force should be taken by only this entire forces. All the forces must be resisted by the only one support. Therefore, it is done. And you know, now here this is the first step that is reaction R A. Is it not? As soon as we have calculated the reaction R A, now we can plot. We can plot the. We can plot the shear force diagram. is it not very simple now it is if you calculate the shear force at this point consider the left hand section left hand side consider the left hand side at this section when you consider the when you calculate the shear force at this point consider the right hand section 2 kN force is acting downwards if you consider the shear force if you calculate the shear force at this point left hand side 2 kN plus 2 kN and 4 kN is acting downward and 6 kN is acting upward therefore the net term that is 6 minus 4 is equal to 2 kN is acting upward that is the shear force 2 kN is the shear force acting upward is it not now there was shift now if you consider this at this point is it not now if you consider this point this section that is 2 kN consider the right hand side right section considering the right hand section 2 kN plus 2 kN is equal to 4 kN is acting downward or consider the left hand section is it not 6 kN is acting upward and 2 kN is acting downward therefore sum of these two algebra x sum 6 is upward 2 downward net is equal to 4 kN is acting upward therefore according to our sign convention left hand side considering the left hand side section left hand side left hand side of the section the result is is it not now considering the left left hand side now if we consider the left hand side of the section now 6 is acting or 6 kN is acting upward 2 kN is acting down therefore the result of these two 4 kN is acting upward that is the shear force available at this point if you consider the right hand section that is 2 kN 2 kN that is sum of these two algebraic sum of the forces in the right hand section is it not algebraic sum of the forces in the right hand section is it not 
2 plus 2, 4 kilonewton. It's acting dominant. If you consider the left hand section, 6 up, 2 down, net is equal to 4 up, isn't it? According to our same convention, that is left side is positive and right side is also positive, isn't it? Therefore, now let us plot. If you consider this section, if you consider the this section of the beam, consider the right hand section, that is, if you consider the right hand section, 2 kilonewton plus 2 kilonewton plus 2 kilonewton is equal to 6 kilonewton. That is the shear force at this point is for 6 kilonewton. If you consider the right hand section. Suppose if you consider the left hand section, that is 6 kilonewton is really only one force is acting upward. Isn't it? So therefore, the shear force at this point, at this section is 6 kilonewton, it is upward and according to the same convention, it is positive. Now therefore now let us plot, let us plot the shear force diagram. To plot the shear force diagram, take a reference that is along the B, along the, the construction line, draw the construction line. Now this is the reference, zero, this is the zero value. Now here 6 kilonewton is acting upward, let us go up by 6 kilonewton. Let us go up by 6 kilonewton and if we calculate the shear force from here to, from this point to here, from here to B, Anyway, you calculate it, it is 6 kN. That is therefore the shear force is 6 kN at all the points. It is 6 kN from all the points. Isn't it? At this point, a 2 kN force is acting downward. A 2 kN force is acting down. And similarly, if we calculate the shear force at this point, 2 kN, 2 kN, 4 kN is acting downward. It is positive shear. And here, if you calculate the, this section, again 4 kN. From here to here, from this B to C, wherever you calculate it, we will get 4 kN in shear force occurs on the B, in the B, isn't it? Therefore, the shear force at this point is 4 kN. Shear force at this point is also 4 kN. Therefore, if you measure this from here to here, if you measure this from here to here, you will get 4 kN at every point, from here to here. And similarly, now here, 2 kN force is acting downward. 2 kN force is acting downward. Therefore, let us go down by 2 kN. Isn't it? We are reaching here. Now, 2 kN. Therefore, see here. Now, if you calculate the shear force at this point, right side, 2 kN downward. Left side, 2 kN upward. Now, therefore, see, from here to here, from C to D, wherever you calculate, we will get the shear force is 2 kN. Therefore, you measure this 2 kN, 2 kN, 2 kN, 2 kN from at all the points. And at this point, a 2 kN force is acting downward, come down and reach 0. Now, this is the variation of shear force diagram, isn't it? Now, let us, for example, if somebody asks, you now what is the shear force at A? Shear force at A is 6 kN. Now, here, at point B, what is the shear force? Shear force is 4 kN or 6 kN. We need to design the structure for, we have to develop the beam for 6 kN shear force. Not for, there are two values available occurs at this point, one is 6 kN, the other one is 4 kN. Therefore, we need to provide the beam, beam for 6 kN for shear force. Like, you know, if you come to see, and ask somebody, you know, somebody will ask you, you now what is the shear force at C? The shear force at C is equal to 4 kN and 2 kN. Which is the other? Which is the shear force? The shear force is 4 kN. For 4 kN force, shear force, we need to design the, adapt the structure. Isn't it? So therefore, at this point, 2 kN. Isn't it? This is the shear force diagram. First to draw the zero, and this is 6 kN is acting upward go up by 6 kN. And from here to here, the value of the shear force is constant. Therefore, continue this. And at this point, 2 kN is acting downward. And 2 kN is acting downward. And you know, wherever you calculate the shear force, 4, 4 kN is acting. acting. 4 kN is in four. shear force is available at us at between B and C. Therefore, continue this. And then at this point, 2 kN is acting down, isn't it? 2 kN is acting down, 
and whenever they calculate from between C and D, we will get two kilonewton force and shear force is acting downward. Therefore, continue this, and this is the shear force diagram. This is the shear force diagram. From this, we can calculate the shear force at any point in the loaded beam. This is not. This is the second step. And if you take this step three, if you if you take the step three bending moment. Now let us calculate the bending moment. Already I told you that the bending moment at free end is equal to zero. Mb moment at bending moment at D is equal to zero. And if you calculate the bending moment at C, that is two multiplied by two is equal to four kilonewton meter. Force into perpendicular distance. Bending moment at C is equal to two into two. It is four kilonewton. Four kilonewton meter. And similarly, if we calculate the bending moment at this point, if we calculate the bending moment at B, bending moment at B is equal to that is two multiplied by four meter distance. Two kilonewton into four meter distance, isn't it? Plus, isn't it? It is two into two kilonewton, isn't it? Two kilonewton into two meter. Now that is what we have written here, isn't it? Now this is the Four kilo, that is two kilonewton at moment at B is equal to two kilonewton into distance four meter into distance four meter and now this is two plus two kilonewton into distance two. Now this is what here. Now four 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 to the eight and two to the four. It comes to twelve kilonewton meter. The moment bending moment at B is equal to twelve kilonewton meter. And similarly, if you consider this point. Now see, that is algebraic sum of all the moment, moments of all the forces is equal to the bend shear force, bending moment, isn't it? Now therefore, that is two kilonewton into six meter. Two kilonewton into six meter. Two kilonewton into six meter. Then two kilonewton into four meter. That is two kilonewton into four meter. And you know, two kilonewton into two meter. Now this is what we have written here. Two kilonewton. Two kilonewton into six meter, and similarly, it is two kilonewton, two kilonewton into four meter, and similarly, two kilonewton. The other force, third one, it is two kilonewton into two kilonewton, two meter. So it comes to twenty-four kilonewton meter. Now, now already we have, we have in our science analysis we are adapted. Now due to this bending, due to this, due to this load, the beam is bending in this part, in this shape. The beam will be bending. It is hugging bending moment. We are calling this as negative bending moment. Now, therefore, now what we need to do? Take a reference. Now, this with respect to this reference, it is bending moment is zero at this point, and bending moment at this point is four kilonewton meter. That is what we have calculated here. Isn't and similarly, now the bending moment at C at B is equal to bending moment at B is equal to four kilonewton already calculated. Now this is four kilonewton from here to here. This is four kilonewton from here to here, and similarly, the bending moment at A, M A, is equal to 24 kilonewton. This is not this point. It is 24 kilonewton, and join this. Now this will give you the that is that is the bending moment diagram for the beam for this loaded beam. This one. This is the bending moment diagram. Now this is the bending moment diagram. So I've written. Now that completes the. Problem, isn't it? Now the solution for the given problem: the shear force diagram and the bending moment. Let us discuss one more problem, then it will be a little more clear. Now again, uh, the problem four that is you now uh, a cantilever beam four meter long is subjected to two point loads of of three kilonewton and four kilonewton at a distance. Three kilometer and four kilometer at a distance two meter and four meter from the fixed end, isn't it? Draw SFD and BMD. See, for example, now see, for, now plot the diagram first, isn't it? A cantilever beam four meter long and subjected to three point two point load. One is four three kilometer, the other one is four kilometer, three kilometer point load. Three kilonewton and four kilonewton at a distance of two meter and four meter. That is two meter and four meter, isn't it? 
from, from the fixed idea, from here to here, four, four meter. For this, again, follow the same procedure, same method. The step one, we know that sigma v is equal to zero. Sigma v is equal to zero, therefore, r is equal to, that is, sigma three, three kilonewton plus four kilonewton. That is, r is acting upward, and three kilonewton and four kilonewton forces are acting downward. For equilibrium condition, the, the upward, upward forces must be equal to downward forces, therefore RE is equal to 7 kilo. And step 2, that is shear force, calculation of shear force. In the step 2, uh, shear force, <coughs> see, at point C, if four, at, now let us calculate the shear force at point C. At point C, a 4 kilonewton force is acting downward. Therefore, at point C, 4 kilonewton is acting downward. Isn't that? Now, if you come to this point, if you come to calculate, if you want to calculate the shear force at this point, if you want to calculate the shear force at this point, at this section, you know, right side, 4 kilonewton is acting downward. Isn't that? If you consider the left hand side, you now then 7 is upward and 3 down. Therefore, net is 4 kilonewton is acting upward. That means that is left left up shear is positive, right down shear is positive according to our sign convention. Therefore, the shear force occurs available between this is it is four kilonewton, four kilonewton, four at every point we will get the four kilonewton. And if you go and calculate the shear force at this point, if you calculate the shear force at this point, now if you calculate the shear force at this point, now here that is right side that is. 3 kilonewton, 3 kilonewton plus 4 kilonewton, that is 7 kilonewton is acting, isn't it? Upward. This is a down, right side, downward, that is left side, upward, isn't it? So therefore, that is 7 kilonewton force occurs available between A and B. So this is what we have calculated. And then plot it, you know, for plot, take a reference, 0, 0 reference, this is 0, 0 reference, that is zero, zero, zero reference. Now we said no here. Seven kilonewton is acting upward. Go up by seven kilonewton. Go up by seven kilonewton. And between E and B, wherever you calculate the shear force, a seven kilonewton force is available. Now therefore, now here from here to here, wherever you measure this, now from zero to seven kilonewton, zero to seven kilonewton, zero to seven kilonewton. Isn't it? At this point, 3 kilonewton force is acting at B. 3 kilonewton force is acting downward. Therefore, it comes down by 3 kilonewton. Isn't it? Then we are reaching 4 kilonewton. Uh, the 4 kilonewton force is a shear force is available here. And from wherever you calculate here, from here, now it is 4 kilonewton force is shear force is occurs. Therefore, constant, it is shear force is constant from B to C. Now, therefore, plot the continuous reporting, then we are at this point, 4 kilonewton is acting downward, come down and join this. Now, this will give you the shear force diagram. This is the shear force diagram. And similarly, step 3, calculation of bending moment. Bending moment, Mc, that is moment at C. Moment at C is equal to 0. 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 And calculate the moment at B. To calculate the moment at B, 4 kilonewton into distance, isn't it? 4 kilonewton into 4 meter, isn't it? This is 4 kilonewton, 4 kilonewton into distance, isn't it? That is for 4 into 2 is equal to 8 kilonewton meter. The bending moment at this point is 8 kilonewton meter. Now bending moment at this point is 8 kilonewton meter, isn't it? And similarly. Now, if you calculate the bending moment at this point, again, okay, you can calculate the bending moment. You can calculate the bending moment on the point. But the critical point, we are calculating the bending moment only at the critical points. Now, therefore, now bending moment at A is equal to 4 multiplied by 4 plus 3 kilonewton multiplied by 2, isn't it? So, this is clockwise, this is clockwise, plus, plus, isn't it? Both are no plus. Therefore, it is 4 multiplied by 4, 4 multiplied by 4, plus that is 3 multiplied by 
2, train multiplied by 2. Therefore, the bending moment at A is 22 kilo newton beta. Now, therefore, now let us plot. Now, according to our same convention, due to the this type, this loading, this type of loading, the beam will deflect or bend in this form, in this direction, in, like this only. Now, therefore, it is hugging bending moment. It is negative bending moment. Therefore, for negative bending moment, now it is. Now, take a reference and this point at B, that is draw, that is plot this, that is 8 Q Newton meter, isn't it? And similarly, at, at, at A, now it is 22 Q Newton, plot this and join this point. Now, all this point, now that will give you the bending moment diagram. See, now we can measure the bending moment diagram, bending moment at, a, at every point. At every point, we can measure the bending moment. Now, that is the advantage of plotting this bending moment, isn't it? Bending moment diagram. So similarly, now in this case, of course, we have only two critical points, the three, that is one, two, three, one, two, three critical points. Now sometimes there may be variation in the bending moment, there is very uh, loading, not the shape of the bending moment, the shape of the diagram also varies, isn't it? Now let us discuss one more problem. See now, we will consider now let us now the another problem a cantilever, a cantilever of beam of span L meter is subjected to a UDL of W kilo newton per meter load throughout its length. Throughout its length. Draw SFD and BMD. Draw SFD and BMD. Now in this problem it is given it cantilever beam, cantilever beam that is fixed end and free end, the cantilever beam of span L, length of the span beam is L meter and subjected to a load of W kilo Newton per meter. Now, for in one meter, for each one meter, W kilo Newton load is acting, is it not? So therefore, now again, let us follow the three, that is, let us follow the three steps, that is the first step. Find out, let us find out the sigma v is equal to zero reaction. So this is the UDL acting downward and here the reaction is acting upward. The entire load, the entire load, the total load, the entire load is resisted by only this reaction, Rea. Therefore, downward force must be equal to upward. Therefore, reaction Rea is acting upward, W is real. W multiplied by L. Total load on the beam is W multiplied by L. W L. W L is acting on the beam. Now, that is the first step. That is one part. That is reaction, calculation of reaction. The second step, shear force. Now, to calculate the shear force, now see, now at this point, shear force is equal to zero. Because there is no force, right then, if you consider no force is acting, it is equal to zero. If you consider the left hand side, upward, minus downward is equal to zero, isn't it? Now, if you calculate the shear force at the center, what is going to happen? Float half of this, that is W L by 2, half, W into L by 2 distance, isn't it? W into L by 2 kilo Newton, this load acting on the half portion of the beam. If you consider the left hand side, then, left hand side, W L is acting upward, and half of this W L by 2 is acting downward. Again, W L by 2 is acting upward. W L by 2 is acting upward. The shear force. Now, therefore, now let us plot here. Now, again, due to this loading, the, the deformation or the deflex bending will be in this direction downward. Therefore, it is again hanging body moment. So, therefore, it is positive. It is, uh, sorry, it is a uh, left up shear is positive. Left up left side of upward force is shear, upward shear is positive, therefore it is positive shear force, but positive shear force according to our same convention, therefore WL is acting upward, WL is acting upward, here 0, isn't it? Now therefore, now this is a variation of the shear force, isn't it? Take the reference, go up by WL and 0, now join this, now this will give you the shear force. Diagram, isn't it? Now from this, it is easy, easy, we can measure the 
variation of shear force at any point on the beam in organic we can measure the shear force isn't it so this is a uniformly you know in the udl you know it is linearly varying the shape of the bending shear force diagram is linearly varying isn't it now below the, the shear shear force diagram below the udl is uniformly varying isn't it linearly varying isn't it the shape of the shear force diagram and the step 3 now we know that the free end free end bending moment is equal to zero and the free end mb is equal to zero and similarly we can calculate the shear force sorry bending moment at the center it is w w in l w l by 2 half of the load half of the load is w into l by 2 where it is acting acting at its center it is assumed that it is acting at it center that is l by 4 at a distance from here there now it is assumed that the force is acting now this is the w l w l by 2 w l is the total load w l by 2 is the half load it is acting at the center at this point it is assumed that it is acting at the center therefore w l by 2 is the load where it is acting it is acting at a distance l by 4 this is l by 4 So therefore, this is the bending moment at C. And similarly, bending moment at at A at A is equal to bending moment at A is equal to that is total load. Total load is W into L. Total load is W multiplied by L. Where it is acting? It is assumed that it is acting at the center half of this distance. That is L by two. is not wl in is the load and where it is acting force into perpendicular distance is the moment is not so therefore bending moment at this point but at this point bending moment at a is equal to wl is the total load into distance it is l by 2 more wl into l by 2 this is the moment is not now kilonewton meter now we know that now it is the sagging it is a Arcing bending moment. Arcing bending moment is negative. It is arcing bending moment negative. Is it not? Now, arcing bending moment is negative. Therefore, now the take a reference. Negative bending moment zero, zero, and then just no, no. You mark, you measure this distance and mark it, and you just join these two points. Now, like you know, at the center also we can measure this and mark this at this point. Now, join this. That will give you the bending moment diagram. Now, now usually always the shape of the bending moment diagram below the UDL is a curve. It is a parabolic line, isn't it? It is a parabolic line. Now, remember always. Now, that is the shear force diagram below the UDL. is linearly varying linearly varying and the bending moment below the udl below the udl is a parabolic like parabolic shape shape of the bending moment diagram below the shape of the bending moment diagram below the udl is a parabolic is not now now that is how now we can measure the bending moment at all the points wherever we need we can now measure this and accordingly according to the bending moment available occurs so we can design the structure according to the bending moment at deep at every point isn't it okay i think uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, your thank you very much for your question sharing now we will continue again in the next class the few more problems we have we will discuss about those problems thank you so much thank you very much for your time Yes, madam.